människor. Modiga människor. Modiga människor. Hello and uh, welcome to episode 117 of Modiga Människor. Um, of course, I should have my microphone here. Uh, and which in English means brave people. Today I have with me uh, Abby Johnson live from US. Uh, before I introduce her, I just want to remind you uh, to go and su subscribe uh, my channel on uh, YouTube. Uh, and all the interviews are also on Rumble and Spotify and Podbean. Uh, and I have my own homepage, modigamanniskor.se, uh, where all my interviews are uh, collected. Uh, don't forget to uh, share all the interviews. Um, oh, and I also recently started a Patreon account where you can support uh, the channel with a small donation. Thank you. And now to Abby. Uh, hello. Hello. Thank you for having me on. Uh, it's fantastic. I mean, um, yeah, you're with us live. And for the Swedish audience who doesn't know about you, uh, you've been working at Planned Parenthood. Uh, I did. I Yeah, I did. I worked there for eight years, which, of course, uh, Planned Parenthood is our the United States. It's it's our country's largest abortion provider. And um, I was there for eight years. I, I ran one of their abortion centers here in the U.S. Sorry, you can hear my kids in the background. Um, I, uh, I ran one of their centers for eight years and um left in 2009 after witnessing a live ultrasound guided abortion procedure and um, witnessed a 13 week old baby fight and struggle for his life against the abortion instruments. And I knew then that there was life in the womb. There was a humanity in the womb and I knew then that I, I could no longer be involved in abortion. So I ended up uh, leaving the facility and um, joined the pro-life movement. And I've been speaking out ever since. Yeah. So, I mean, so for, for the Swedish audience, we don't have like uh, a big debate or something about uh in this question at all it's it's only about the the, the women's right mm -hmm. uh, to do an abortion but you you really talk about um everything in in another context and um you you've been you wrote three books mm -hmm. i yeah. have yeah you know, it was that way. I mean, for a long time, I think it was that way here in the United States as well. I think a lot of people, you know, thought that abortion was sort of a a settled issue here in the United States that, you know, women just had a right to abortion and it was a, a woman's right. And, um, and, you know, just sort of wasn't debated. And the pro-life people here in the U.S. continued to push and push and push and, you know, pushed for the rights of the children in the womb and, you know, really continued to show that, no, this there is a life in the womb and mm -hmm. these children matter. And they deserve a voice and they deserve for us to, you know, to really fight for them. And so, you know, here, here we are after, you know, over 49 years of legalized abortion in the United States, you know, now our laws have been overturned. And, um, and so I think it shows that, 
you know, we we can fight and and win on mm -hmm. this issue, even when, you know, people think, you know, it's it's settled or we think that nothing's going to change or, um, you know, we still can make a difference when it comes to abortion and abortion laws. Mm. Because you have an, another uh, view uh, to, to look at this. I mean, in, in Sweden, we talk about, and especially the, the feminists talk about that there is uh, um, ah, a backlash for, for the women. Um, but you have, I mean, you've seen so much uh, things from the inside. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. also work with uh, uh, midwives and people who have actually been in the industry. And, and can, can you tell us a little about that and, and what you've seen and what they've seen? Yeah. You know, I think that abortion has, has been talked about and, and sort of sold to the public as you know, something that is good for women as something that women need. But when we look at the damage that abortion does to women, clearly it is not something that is good for us. You know, there is nothing good about making a child, making a woman's child, an enemy to a mother. Um, there, you know, there's nothing good at uh, creating a war between a mother and her child. And that's what abortion does. So instead of truly empowering a woman, and which is what feminists should be doing, right? That's feminists say they're there to empower women. They say that they're there to help raise up women. So instead of saying to a woman, you know what, you're in a difficult situation. And so I'm going to help you. I'm going to help fund your education. I'm going to help you get a better job. I'm going to, you know, help you with resources or I'm going to help you with babysitting or I'm going to help you, you know, do whatever it is that you need, right? I'm going to help you get, you know, better transportation or whatever. Instead of doing that, they say to a woman, you are not strong enough to be a mother to <laughs> this child that's growing within you. So the only solution there is for you in this time of weakness is to kill your baby. And that is not empowerment. That is not empowering a woman. That is, that is clearly manipulating her and that is exploiting her in a moment of weakness in her life. And what we do in the pro-life movement is we look at a woman and say, how can we help you? How can we help you with your educational goals? How can we help you with your career goals? What can we do to truly empower you, you know, in your in your goals and the things that you want to do in your life and your dreams, right? You can have a baby and still fulfill your dreams. And, um, but that's not what the pro-choice movement is doing. And that's not what feminists are doing. And the, what's happening in abortion clinics, I mean, we see it all the time. Women are being, uh, you know, they're being manipulated into choosing abortion. They are not having true choice. Um, the, the care inside of, of these places where women receive abortions is it's not good care. Um, and so, you know, women truly do deserve, deserve better. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. And, and, uh, um, 
I was just thinking about um, all, all this this feminist uh, movement uh, and and the anger about oh, oh I kind of um, slip slipped <laughs> my. Um, I think one of the reasons mm -hmm. that a lot of these women are so angry, a lot of, you know, these feminists are so angry is because they themselves have had abortions. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot easier, I think, for, you know, these women to say, well, abortion is a right and abortion is no big deal. And what I was carrying inside my womb was nothing and mm. it was just tissue and it was just cells, right? And it wasn't a baby. It's a lot easier to say that than to admit that I might have taken a life. I mm. might have taken the life of my own child, right? Mm. So it's a lot easier to just be angry and to yell and to get mad than it is to admit that maybe you did something wrong. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's where a lot of the anger comes in the feminist movement. Uh, I think I have actually not spoken to one woman who haven't uh, kind of regret the abortion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the timing wasn't right and, and they, they feel okay, but they still regret it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because abortion is incredibly unnatural. Mm -hmm. I mean, taking the life of your own baby is incredibly unnatural. And sometimes, you know, it takes years for a woman to understand that regret, to feel that regret. Many times, uh, you know, I've had an abortion and I remember after I had my abortion, I felt very relieved, <laughs> you know, I mean, after I had my abortion, mm -hmm. I had this, you know, I thought, oh my gosh, I have this big crisis and I'm feeling very nervous. And, you know, and so right after I had my abortion, I felt very relieved. I thought, okay, you know, the biggest problem I've ever experienced in my life is over. And so I felt very relieved. It wasn't until years later that I realized, oh my gosh, I've done this terrible thing. You know, I've, I've killed my child mm -hmm. and, but that didn't, that didn't happen until many years later. And, th and that's what we find with a lot of women, you know, immediately they feel relieved and they feel glad that they made the decision because it was just this big problem you know, that now has been taken care of. And it's not until years later that they finally come to the realization of what they've done. Hmm. So what, what made you kind of uh, resign? I mean, you just walk, walked away from, from your work. And I mean, what, yeah. was, it, uh, was it like that? Or was it, uh, I mean over time or was it that time that you, you you actually when you realized this is a life yeah it was really seeing that ultrasound kid. guided abortion yeah. that was what made me say you know i i can't do this anymore and i realized that i had been you know believing a lie and i realized that i had been saying lies. I had been, you know, because I had believed this lie, then, you know, when women would come to me, I would tell them lies, you know? And, uh, and I just knew I, I couldn't be a part of it anymore. Hmm. So, so what, what did you do? What, I mean, you, you went away and, and did you immediately, uh, start to work against abortion? Well, originally, I mean, originally I did not, you know, this is not what I wanted to do. <laughs> um, originally, I just sort of wanted to leave very quietly and just mm -hmm. go away and get another job and do something else, you know. But um, 
Planned Parenthood, actually, they took me to court and they tried <laughs> to silence me. Uh, they tried to prevent me from being able to tell my story. And when they did that, um, they sent out a press release to the media telling the media that they were taking me to court. And when they did that, uh, I got picked up all around the world. And then people started asking me, you know, the media started asking me questions saying, you know, what don't they want us to know? You know, what do you know? What's taking place inside of the abortion clinics that, you know, why are they trying to silence you? And so that really, all of a sudden I was on all these TV shows and I'm, you know, telling my story, which is not what I intended to do, but I just felt like God really opened that door for me. And so I walked through it and I've been doing it ever since for now, almost 13 years. Hmm. Yeah. And you are actually involved in, in several uh, things. I mean, uh, I mean, there's, uh, huh? You you help you support these mothers. Mm -hmm. You you. I mean, how many organizations are you behind? <laughs> yeah, so um, I run two nonprofits, and one helps get uh, women and men who work in abortion clinics. We get them out of the abortion. Uh, clinics and get them into a relationship with Christ. And we um, help get them therapy and any counseling that they need and help them get like new jobs and things like that. Um, and then I run another nonprofit called Pro Love Ministries. And we have many different um, programs and projects that we run. We have an international ministry that we run. We have um, a crisis line that we run for uh, pregnant moms, for single parents. Um, so we do, we have an adoption ministry. We have all different types of things that we run. Mm. And you do actually a lot of things. But, um, and I've been listening to, to a lot of things. You've been, uh, some, uh, uh, a lot of your shows and, and your interviews. But um, in one of them, you, you talk about this propaganda Uh, so you fell for the propaganda. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us a little about that? Because, yeah, uh, yeah I'm very I curious. Mean, you know, mm. the abortion industry has been very good about sort of selling people on this idea that, you know, abortion is something. Well, many years ago, they used to tell people that, you know, abortion needed to be safe, legal, and rare. And so, you know, oh, we don't, we don't want there to be a lot of abortions. We want to keep abortion rare. And, you know, we're trying to prevent the need for abortion. And, and so when I got involved, that was really, that was what I heard all the time was that we're trying to prevent abortion, prevent abortion. Um, but as I stayed there, you know, I realized that, we're actually selling abortion. I mean, we are essentially tricking women into having abortions. And, um, and that, that is the abortion machine. That is the abortion industry. They, abortion is a product they are selling. So just like you go to buy a car and that car salesman is trying to get you to buy a car. If you walk into an abortion clinic in the United States, that clinic is trying to get you to buy an abortion. And, you know, that was something I really didn't realize because it's just part of the propaganda that they sell you as a, a staff member when you walk in the door. You know, it's like, oh, you know, we're we're a, you know, a charitable organization and we're trying to help women. And, you know, in reality, every woman that walks through those doors is just a number to them. And it, they're just trying to make money off of every woman that walks in. So what do they do to the, I mean, the industry, uh, what do they do with the babies? Uh, so, Um, 
they can do one of two things. So they either treat them as biomedical waste. So they will go to, well, some clinics will put them down a garbage disposal or some clinics will take them to a biohazard medical waste facility where they're burned. Um, or they will, they will send them to a research lab and that clinic will get paid per baby that they sell to a research lab where those babies will be, I mean, the babies are sold for parts. They're sold for, you know, to researchers, um, to, you know, have different sorts of research performed on them. Hmm. And that's another revenue stream for the abortion industry. Uh, if if I'm not r- wrong now, I, I maybe you can correct me. Uh, but is there five uh, states in U.S. Um, who allows abortion up uh, until uh, week forty? Yeah, there's more. There's more than that that allow it, but there's only five states right now that have doctors that do it. Mm-hmm. So. There's currently like 11 states that allow it, but there's only five states that have doctors. So, um, and uh, yes, there mm. there are uh, doctors that will perform abortions mm. through all 40 weeks of pregnancy in the United States for so, I mean, any I mean, reason. I, I mean, can, can you even call that an abortion? I mean, uh, it shouldn't be called <laughs> an abortion. I mean, that is just, it's murder. Um, I, I actually just received records uh, from a woman today. Um, well, I didn't just receive them today, but I, I was looking over them today uh, from a woman who had an abortion. Uh, she's very regretful of that decision now, but she had an abortion at 30 weeks. Um, mm-hmm. just an elective abortion at 30 weeks, um, at a clinic in Boulder, Colorado. And, uh, she sent me her records to look over, uh, from the clinic. And it's, I mean, it's despicable what they're doing, uh, to these babies. Mm. And I mean, you don't even like need a reason except for, I think it's it's really hard to to talk about this. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a mother of three, mm-hmm. so mm. yeah. And I also work as a do- doula, uh, so I I've been uh, to the hospital a lot to see the baby's been born, and mm-hmm. um, and I don't know where during this time I actually started to see because it's. Um, when, when they take the, the baby's blood, um, yeah. that's another thing. And as a doula, I can see that they really don't want the child to have this. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. That's something I, I um, reacted very strongly to. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for the English word. Maybe you can help me. Uh, <laughs> Um, um, ah, vad heter det? Navelsträngsblod. Ah, the, the blood from the... The umbilical cord? Uh, yeah, from, from, yeah. 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 So that's uh, another thing I've been working with a lot. Uh, because that's not right. Mm-hmm. What they're doing. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Can Can you... This film that you've been doing, mm-hmm. that hopefully uh, will end up here in Sweden. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. can you tell us a little about that, yeah, about your movie? Yeah, so it's uh, it's it's my story. Um, it's not a documentary though; it is a, a film, um, and it was it opened in theaters here in March of 2019. It was in the theaters for 14 weeks. And now we're just trying to, you know, spread it across the world. Um, It's, you know, it shows abortion. It shows what abortion is. It shows my story. 
Um, and you know, I think it, it has brought a lot of healing to people who have had abortions. Um, it shows my own story with abortion. Um, and we're just, you know, it's been in Italy, it's been in France, it's been in Poland, it's been, you know, just sort of all across the world. So we would love for it to open up in Sweden. Mm. Yeah. Now, now you have seven kids. I have eight. Eight kids. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, yeah. There is one more than I, I read <laughs> on the, on the internet. <laughs> yeah. yeah so and you, I, so love, I love doulas. I had doulas with my birth. So. <laughs> hmm. Fantastic. I mean, so the work you are doing is um, uh, how do people react? Uh, I mean, uh, of course, most of the people you meet probably don't get angry at you, but but uh, I figure that people been angry at at your work. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people. They, a lot of people do get angry. Um, a lot of people, you know, don't agree with me and, uh, I mean, that's okay. Uh, they don't have to agree with me. They haven't seen the things that I have seen, but I mean, honestly, there's, if, if you, if you don't agree with me, like if you don't agree that life begins at conception, then you don't agree with science because science tells us that life begins at conception. And I mean, that's, that's just the reality. So you can be, you can be for abortion. Um, but I just think that if you're for abortion, you need to be honest about what you're supporting. So mm -hmm. if you're for abortion, then you need to be honest and just say that you support killing, a uh, and, an unborn human being because science says that inside the womb at the moment of conception is a living human being there. It's, it's not any other species, right? No woman has ever given birth to a dog or a cat or anything else. It is a human being. It is living, right? There's only two states of being either living or dying. And the baby in the womb is not dying, it's living, it's growing. So it's living, it's a human being, it is life at the moment of conception. Science confirms all of those things. And I have a lot more respect for people who are pro-choice who will at least admit that. At least admit that if you support abortion, then you believe that it is acceptable to take the life of a human being because mm -hmm. that is scientifically what you believe. Um, what I don't have respect for is people lying about science. I don't have respect for people who say it's not a human being or it's not a life or mm -hmm. it's not alive. Um, that is, that is, contrary to everything scientifically that we know to be true. And I just think that people need to be honest and, uh, people, you know, they get mad about it, but they're not really mad at me. They're just mad at the truth. And mm -hmm. the truth does make people feel uncomfortable <laughs> and that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's okay. Um, the truth made me feel uncomfortable when I was living a life that was opposed to the truth. Um, mm. But what I do know is that the truth does set us free. And I hope that more people come to embrace the truth of life. And I hope that more people start to really open their eyes to what abortion is. And I think that if more people actually saw what an abortion is, if they saw what an abortion did to the life of an innocent child in the womb, I think more people would be against it. So 
your work is actually to raise awareness. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And I mean, there's like somebody on here right now who's like, you know, is, is a, a sperm, a murdered baby. And that's so ridiculous. That's like the most ridiculous argument. That's not even scientific. And that's, those are the types of arguments that we hear all the time. And it's a completely unscientific argument, right? Of course, a sperm is alive. But if you understand anything about human reproduction, if you understand anything about science, then you understand that a child is not conceived until a sperm and an egg meet, right? That's like very, very basic <laughs> biology. Mm -hmm. So we hear these types of arguments, though, all the time. So no, of course, a sperm alone isn't a murdered baby. But if you kill a human being that has been conceived, a sperm and an egg that has met, that has now been conceived, then yes, that, that is killing a child. So, but it's like these, these people who are pro-choice, it's like they have lost all scientific ability mm -hmm. and, um, and it's, it's really, it's interesting. Um, it's, it's interesting because I think that some of them need to go back to a basic, uh, biology class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I know that we're a little short of time, but is there, um, is there ever, I mean, in, in your uh, eyes, okay with, with an abortion? I mean, can you justify an abortion? No, I don't think I don't think it's ever okay to take the life of an innocent human being under any circumstances. Um, there are, you know, some people who think it's okay to, you know, take a life if, you know, that person uh, conceived under sexual assault, you know, under rape or something like that. Um, but, you know, either we believe that life is sacred that, you know, innocent life is sacred or we don't. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I know many people who have been conceived under those circumstances that are alive today and their life is just as valuable as someone who was conceived in love. And they would tell you that they're very thankful that their mm -hmm. mother chose life for them. And so, um, I don't, I don't believe there's ever a circumstance where, uh, we need to deliberately terminate a child's life, um, to, to save, you know, to even, even there are situations where people say, where people say, uh, you know, oh, well, we need to, uh, you know, kill a child to save the mother's life. And, um, there's never a time where we need to abort a child to save a mom. Del delivery is what saves a mother's life, not abortion. So there may be times where we need to deliver a baby to save a mother's life, but there's never a time where we need to kill that child before delivery to save her life. Mm. Oh. Um, I think we need to have a, a, a more a, a, of, a, of a debate actually in the subject. I mean, um, do, do you often get invited to debate or do you just, I mean, the most of, of what I've seen is you being uh, ah, introduced to, to speak about the subject, but have you... Uh, been in many debates nobody will debate with me no hmm. i wish they would <laughs> uh, uh, but I, I th we should have that climate really yeah we should yeah there should be more dialogue and yeah. debate but uh nobody nobody from the pro-choice side will debate with me hmm. so uh if we uh and this uh, interview, what, what's your hope for the future? 
you know, I see a lot of hope in young people. Um, my daughter, my oldest daughter is 15 and she is, you know, incredibly pro-life and, um, our young people, I find, you know, especially here in the United States, there are a lot of our young people are very pro-life. I mean, they're the first photo they have of themselves is, you know, of them as a baby on an ultrasound. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, they, they find that they're, I, I find as I talk to them, I mean, we go to the March for life here in the United States and 70% of the people there are under the age of 30. And, uh, so I, I've, you know, I have great hope in that, that, you know, a lot of the younger generation values the sanctity of human life. Um, and I think that, you know, they are a generation that, um, you know, I think they value their faith a lot, but I also think that they, they look at the science, they look at the medical technology, they look at the advancements that we've made and, uh, they very much value that when they're making their decisions, um, on human life. And, uh, I appreciate that very much. And, uh, so I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see where the, where the future goes. I'm excited about, you know, things that have happened here in the United States, the, you know, reversal of our terrible law, uh, Roe versus Wade and the state's able to make, you know, being able to make their own decisions. The state that I live in, Texas, abortion is now illegal here. Um, all of our abortion clinics have closed. So, you know, we're already seeing a tremendous amount of women calling in and, you know, um, having their babies. And so we're, we're very thankful for that. Hmm. And I'm actually very, very thankful, Abby, that you wanted to be on on the show. Thank you so much. And I mean, it's I'm so glad that you uh, gave your uh, view of of uh, of this because this is also needed. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much mm-hmm. for having me. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.